Hey folks, Chef Cutting here. Want to talk to you about a great new recipe I have. This recipe is called my caviar float with roasted garlic. And what a great dish this is. I'm going to be taking a small wooden boat that I've gotten from my great friends over at food foodstuff.biz and I'm going to be putting almost like a, a Peruvian ceviche into the dish and then topping it with a wonderfully beautiful chilled caviar and roasted garlic. So wait until we get this together. You, 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 you will absolutely amaze your friends, colleagues, and if you're using this in a catering or restaurant environment, people will come back for just this. So uh, without any further ado, let's get in my test kitchen and let's go ahead and make the caviar floats with roasted garlic. Hi folks, Chef Cutting here. I want to just talk with you real quickly about what we're going to be doing today. This is going to be a tr traditional Peruvian recipe, uh, but I am making this uh, because I want to show off these awesome little wooden boats. And I'm going to make three of them here. And what I have here is enough to actually make 12, but I'm only going to use enough to make with the fish three of them. So basically, what I'm doing with this and, and these really cool boats uh, are from my really good friends at foodstuff.biz and uh, they're so unique in the way that they look because you could use them from anywhere from South American cooking all the way to Oriental cooking because they just have that that look to them but I am using these today to do a traditional ceviche dish which I call my caviar boat and we're going to go through the ingredients with you real quickly here. I have uh, two and a half to three ounces of sliced flute here, which we will dice shortly. I have two tablespoons of what's called leche de tigre. Uh, and basically what this is, is it's just lime juice, celery, garlic, and ginger pureed together. And it, and it makes this kind of the solid sauce. Uh, and it's really very, very good very 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 popular in Peru I have uh, a lime here although I would tell you that the best limes to get are Mexican limes I have about two tablespoons of caviar this is salmon caviar so uh, these are baby salmon eggs uh, you don't need to use these you can get lesser uh, lump fish is usually the cheapest so you can get that if you like I have a bunch of uh, fresh cilantro here uh, small pepper a chile, which in Peru are pronounced ahi, ahi chilies, right? And, uh, and then I have a quarter of a red onion. And the way we're going to do this really is we're going to make this ceviche style. I'm going to chop up the fish. I'm going to go ahead and, and put a, just a touch of this marinade and some of the red onion in with the fish once it's chopped. Set it to one side and then create the rest of the dish and then top it up with each boat and I'll show you exactly how we're going to do that. So let's get started and, and prepare the fish. Okay ladies and gentlemen, I have about three pieces, one ounce each of uh, my fish and, and typically you want to use flute for this dish. If you can't find flute then you'll want to use a, a sole um, but flute's a little less expensive. Uh, but you do want to use a very smooth white fish for this. You don't want to get something that's you know three or four dollars a pound because it won't taste good and what we're going to do is I'm going to just show you with one piece here we're going to you see how the veins of I'll bring this up so you can see it though you see how the veins of the fish go like this you want to cut with the vein you don't want to cut against the vein so this would be cutting against the vein this is cutting with the vein okay you want to cut with the vein so I'm going to show you how we're going to do that just simply cutting down the middle like so Now, the reason why you want to cut with the vein is because it will be a lot easier for someone to eat. Um, so we're going to cut the rest of the fish and then we're going to move on to the next piece. Alright, the fish is done, but I want to show you something here. Uh, if you see a piece of fish that looks like this, this is what's called a bloodline. You don't want that in there because it's kind of bitter. So you, you can cut it out by just going like this. and now it's gone. You want all the fish to be white. You don't want any blood of any kind to be in the fish. And even though it may not look like blood, it might just look like a discoloration, it is indeed blood.
Okay, the next, the next shot we're going to do here is we're going to take the onion. You can see I've pulled the skin off the onion. We want to really shave the onion close like this. So you want to take the knife and really go very close to the front so that you've got really paper thin slices of onion. You're not really going to need a lot. That's why I always say it's always cool to have a quarter of an onion in your fridge because you can do stuff like this. Okay. The okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the pepper here. We're going to go ahead and take the lid of the pepper off the cap like so and put it to one side. We're going to cut the pepper like this. You want to use a small pepper because the small peppers are so easy to work with. You can use a red, yellow, orange. I'm using an orange. And you see how I flattened it all out like this? And you just cut it in half again, cut it in half again, and now you've got little strips. You want to do the same thing you did with the onions to the peppers. You want to cut them really thin. You don't want this to be chunky. You want this to be just little strips. Because this is more of a garnish than it is a flavor. And, and again, if you're going to make 12 or 20 of these appetizers, the amount that I've given you here to do for prep is about enough to do all 20, depending on the size. If you're using one ounce servings, this is enough to do 20. As you can see, I have more than enough for three. I've only used one half of this small pepper. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the lime. We're just simply going to cut that in half. We're going to use that at the end. Put that to one side. We're going to take the cilantro and we're going to find three really good leaves. One, two, three. Three really good leaves and then the rest we're just going to chop up into a fine slice. So we're going to take the leaves off the stems like so. And we're going to chop that up into a nice little chop. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll this all up together so it's in a nice little bunch. And if you do it right and you just continue to roll it in your fingers as if you're rolling a cigarette, it's really simple to chop this up. And again, you want to get this as small as possible. So once you've got it all sliced up, then just go ahead and chop it until it's into a nice small chop. Of course, being careful not to cut your fingers. Okay, the last piece we have is a small pepper. This is the ahi chili. And uh, you want to be very, very liberal with this. You do not want to use a lot. Uh, always remember whenever you're working with hot chilies like this uh, that you use either a glove or you thoroughly wash your hands after you finish with it. I am just going to make really small cuts here at the tip of the pepper. If I have any seeds, I'm going to get rid of those seeds because those seeds are going to be very hot and they don't need to be there. And I'm probably only going to use about that much because when you serve this to your guests, you don't want people's mouths on fire. So as you can see, that wasn't a lot either. All right, so now. I'm going to go ahead and chop that chili up, get into the small little pieces. And you got probably about a half a teaspoon of that pepper ready to go. If you want, you can also use a habanero, but for me, I think using the uh, ahi chilies is a little better. Predominantly, there's, um, you know, they, there's about five or six different kinds of ahi chilies. Uh, this is a, a roco ahi chili, uh, but you can use any number of them, whatever is in season. All right, so now we are ready to start doing our deal. We have all of our prep done, and as you can see, that is the most complicated part of the recipe, everything we just did. And then we have our caviar right here. So now we're going to make this ceviche style and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. You want to use a bowl which is called an activating bowl which is usually a stainless steel bowl of some sort. 
Um, if you use these kind of bowls, which are porcelain, nothing's going to happen, and it's not good for you to do that because you want the the fish to cook a little in the ceviche. And the way the people in Peru and in the Orient cook uh, ceviche is by using the acid in the lime juice. So uh, I want to make sure that I'm going to have my fish cooked properly uh, so that I don't give this out and it's not done uh, per recipe. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get a stainless steel bowl because that will activate it and we're going to make the ceviche and then we're going to use this leche de tigre which is the sauce I was telling you about and we're just going to spoon that over it and garnish it with the rest. So let's get moving. Alright here we have our stainless steel bowl. The first thing we're going to do is of course add the fish. There we are. We have our fish in there. I'm going to take one half of the lime and I'm just simply going to squeeze it like halfway. You don't want to squeeze a lot of lime in here. You don't want there to be a lot of lime juice. You just want to be enough to cover. And then we're going to take the chile and we're going to sprinkle that in there. And then we're going to take the onion and we're going to put that in there. Okay? And you can use a pair of tongs, spatula, whatever you want. I'm going to use my hands. And you just want to mix this around until it's thoroughly mixed together. And then once it is, you have two choices. You can either put regular salt, like kosher salt. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest an iodized salt, but kosher salt and pepper or just pepper. I'm going to put both. First, a little turn of the pepper. And a small sprinkle of sea salt. Now, once I've done that, it is time to let this sit for about five to 10 minutes in the refrigerator. If you want to run an ice bath in your sink and just leave it in the water on top of the ice, that is traditionally how the Peruvians make this. Uh, but you don't have to do that. You can just put it in the refrigerator. So off it goes. Okay, here we are. We're right back there. It's nice and cool. Uh, it, you can really see that the fish has started to pick up the acid from the, from the limes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start to plate it up in our little bowls. Okay, folks, now I've got the bowls here. I'm just going to go ahead and put the... Um, wonderful fluted ceviche here into the bowl like so and you want those you want those onion slices to really stick out like this you want them sticking up and and really looking dramatic so don't make sure that you have an even distribution of the onion in each one of your boats because you don't want one boat to have more than the other all right, there we go. Now it's time to get creative. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the leche de tigre sauce, which is right here. And again, just to review, this is uh, lime juice, ginger, garlic, and uh, celery. And it's pureed. And it's made, uh, it's pureed to a point where it gets almost solid. So it's really kind of cr cool because leche de tigre stands for tiger's milk. And this was the Peruvian's way of serving this to people in shots, you know, like shot glasses, uh, when they have a hangover. Uh, it's supposed to nurse them back to life. Hence the word leche de tigre. So we're going to go ahead and take a spoon and just drizzle some of that over it. And we're going to take that. You can see how I got, it's kind of foamy too. You like that, that's a good consistency. Just pour that over there, just like so. Then we're going to take a little bit of our, uh -uh, our chili here, place that on the top like so. And we're going to take a little bit of this chopped cilantro, place that on top like so. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to take the cilantro leaf 
and put it on top of the cilantro. And the reason we're doing the, the chopped cilantro and a, a leaf is because we really want to separate that caviar from the actual ceviche. And so we want everyone to have a good mouthful of the, the flavor, but this leaf is kind of a vehicle to keep the caviar separate from the ceviche. So when your guest tries this, they get two different flavors. So that's very, very important. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and put our caviar on the top, like so. And I'm using uh, a yellow caviar, but you're welcome to use a black one too. Either one will be fine. And if you really want to put a last minute a dramatic part on there, you can go ahead and just place a little more of the chopped parsley on the top. And that just looks amazing, doesn't it? Look, look, look at this. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. My traditional ceviche boat topped with caviar. These are my caviar boats with the leche de tigre sauce, which has our nice roasted garlic in there. It's amazing. You'll enjoy it. Your guests will enjoy it. Feel free to make as many of those as you want because I'm sure they'll come back for more. Bon appetit.